I just watched a newly released straight to Netflix movie, Troy the Odyssey, and I was astonished by its fantastic acting, effective storytelling, and superb special effects. It made me think back on the 2004 film starring Brad Pitt, which I used to enjoy, but which may now be overshadowed. So I rewatched the 2004 film as well, and instead of simply reviewing Troy Odyssey, I'll compare it directly to its contemporary. Which film conveys the Greek myths more accurately, provides more spectacle, and ultimately, which is the superior film? It's Troy versus Troy the Odyssey. Now you know who you're fighting. Maybe you fought with your heart and your testicles. No, stop, stop, stop! So to start, let's compare the different actors for different characters in both movies. In the main role in Troy, we have Brad Pitt playing Achilles. Brash, charming, and extremely fit, he's a very convincing ultimate warrior. In Troy to Odyssey, we have this guy who's slightly less handsome than Brad Pitt and perhaps less imposing, but he has a buzz cut, which is what soldiers usually get, so that's pretty convincing. And while he doesn't do much in Troy to Odyssey, he makes quite an impression before getting killed in the first 20 minutes of the movie. And speaking of getting killed, I thought it was very clever how in the original Troy they had Achilles get shot by multiple arrows that he pulls out one by one except he doesn't get to the one on his heel, creating the illusion that he died from a specific wound, maintaining the legend of Achilles' heel without having to include supernatural elements into the story. In Troy to Odyssey, they do the same thing, having Achilles get shot in the ankle and then killed another way so they wouldn't have to include supernatural elements. It's a close call, but Buska Guy didn't have enough screen time to quite show us how great he could have been, and the character ends up being slightly less memorable, so I'm giving it to Brad Pitt. Is there no one else? Is there no one else? Odysseus in 2004 Troy is played by Sean Bean, an actor known for dying in almost every movie he's in. In Troy, The Odyssey, we instead have someone who looks like a worn out truck driver version of Sean Bean, seemingly experiencing a food allergy. He's the main character of his movie, leading the way through all kinds of thrilling adventures. Now, while watching the 2004 movie, although I knew Odysseus' character survives the Iliad, having Sean Bean play him made me a little nervous throughout. It was just so unusual seeing him make it to the end. The unfortunate faced man in Troy The Odyssey I knew was going to make it, so that took away from the suspense a little bit. For that reason, and also because his performance may have been slightly better, I have to give it to Sean Bean. Find peace, my brother. Although, I do have to say that the allergy guy does a great impersonation of Sean Bean's voice. Will you help me regain the throne of my city? Who are you, stranger? I am Odysseus, King of Ithaca. I have dreamed many years that I would return home and meet my son. Now let's look at Agamemnon, Agamemnon, Agamemnon. It's a hard name to say, from both movies. In Troy, he's portrayed by the renowned Brian Cox, best known for playing the captain in Super Troopers. In Troy, the Odyssey is this crazy Australian guy with a tattoo that the filmmakers tried but gave up on covering up with makeup. What? What are you talking about? Speak plainly. It doesn't really matter though, because this man is actually brilliant. Owner of surrender? I have a cuck hold on this flamboyant nation. My Helen, my bride, my property lies with them dirtiest, slimiest creature of them all. I want to see this man in more movies. He could play other great leaders like Napoleon or Abraham Lincoln. This man delivering the Gettysburg Address would be beautifully inspiring. I see them Trojans ride in and out all day. If they can do it, so can we! The more movies he's in, the better, and there's no contest on this one. Troy, the Odyssey, gets its first point. Let us take our glory. Okay, let's blast through the remaining major characters. Let's start with Hector, who's only in the 2004 film because he's probably dead by the time Troy the Odyssey starts, so that's a wash. Paris is in both movies, but he dies within one second in Troy the Odyssey, 
which isn't really supposed to happen, so I guess that point goes to the 2004 movie. Next is Helen of Troy, and her only job really is to be hot, and the one in the 2004 movie does this pretty convincingly, although I wouldn't go to war over her. Then again, the one in Troy, The Odyssey, I probably wouldn't notice in a Columbus, Ohio bar, so point goes to the 2004 Helen. Then there's Cersei, a major character in Troy the Odyssey, played by a girl who looks a lot like Rey from the new Star Wars movies, although she's a slightly better actress. Sirens are a myth. No, they are as real as you and I. And if you have a question and ask them, they will answer it, for they know all things. But you will be lost forever. She's not even in the 2004 Troy movie, and at first I thought this was because she was only in the Odyssey portion of the legend, then I looked it up and found out she was a completely original character. Homer probably didn't include a character like her because he didn't live in a time when people appreciated strong female characters with zero personality being shoved into every single story. Anyway, she's not in the 2004 film, so this is a wash. You cannot have me by your side forever, Greek! The Kraken will follow for all eternity! Until you and your kingdom are dead! Quiet, Trojan witch! Forward, Heracles! That's enough characters, so let's move on to the movie making elements. Starting with writing in terms of excitement and intrigue. In the 2004 movie, they highlight the struggles of several characters throughout the Trojan War, but mostly focus on Achilles' wavering devotion to the fight, influenced by his desire to be remembered and his hatred for Agamemnon. 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 Fuck. In Troy to Odyssey, a lot of random stuff happens to Odysseus on his way home from the war, which is pretty much the plot of Homer's poem. Still, having character development, meaningful interactions, and moments that lead into each other goes a long way, so I had to give this one to Troy 2004. Now let's talk about writing in terms of mythical accuracy. In the 2004 movie, Menelaus and Agamemnon are killed, which isn't what happens in the Iliad. In fact, when Agamemnon, the most powerful man in the world, who practically owns all of it, dies, no one seems to notice. Also, they decided to change Achilles' gay lover to his cousin, Patroclus, my cousin. Which only makes it more weird when you think about it. In Troy to Odyssey, though, we have um, Minotaurs and Kraken, that, that's from Norse mythology, and, and Priam shoots lightning out of nowhere. And there's no pigs. So I guess 2004 Troy wins, but it is a close call. Now let's look at the dialogue. The movies have very similar lines so we can easily compare and contrast them. We can start with a romantic scene in a 2004 film where Achilles is putting the moves on Perseus. All the gods are to be feared and respected. I'll tell you a secret. Something they don't teach you in your temple. Beautiful. Thank you, Brad Pitt. Um, Odysseus? I do not wish to be immortal. <laughs> you are with me forever, my love. You have no choice now. If there is no death, then life is a journey without destination. Okay, well, um, I guess Brad Pitt won that one. We can, we can move on. Aesis, will you join me? Tell the truth. May Athena guard us on this dark journey. Let us go home. Uh, was that English? Now let's look at set design, costumes, and props. It's important to hit all the details when trying to create a convincing world. In Troy, most of the sets, props, and costumes look like something that could have existed in ancient times. In Troy the Odyssey, the outfits look a little less spectacular, less convincing. Some of the dresses have visible zippers. And the boat Odysseus supposedly journeyed the oceans on is hardly big enough to give five people a place to stand. Troy 2004 wins, but only, maybe, because it had a much bigger budget, you know? Now let's look at the special effects. Well... Uh... Okay... 
for 2004 wins, but only because it had a much, 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 much bigger budget. I mean, come on. How about which movie has the most emotional scene? Probably one of the most purely emotional scenes in Troy is when Hector is preparing to fight Achilles, as everyone in his family says goodbye to him. Except this scene is actually kind of stupid when you think about it, because why would anyone in his family expect the greatest warrior Troy's ever seen to lose the fight? He's easily defeated countless heroes, including Achilles' best buddies, Patrocles and Ajax, yet his family seems certain he's not getting out of this one. I won't understand if Hector was nervous because he's actually seen Achilles fight, and maybe being a great warrior himself sees that he's being outmatched, but his family and friends should be all like, you go get him, Tiger, you got the shit. You do you like you always do. But instead they're all like, you were a great son. I'm really proud of you. Uh, your kids will miss you and shit. Hector. No father ever had a better son. Way to like back up your champion and instill confidence, you flamboyant Trojan. <laughs> In Troy to Odyssey, the most emotional scene probably comes when Odysseus is seduced by the sirens, driving him mad with images of his wife. Let's take a look. Ignore them, they are only voices. Come to me, my love. My body needs the fire within you. Sushi. Kiss me, taste me, love me. Untie me, I do not need these ropes. I know the way home. You calm yourself, King of Ithaca. They show you only delusions. Do not leave me here alone. Do not leave me. Come to us. We will set you free. We will set you free. God! My love, my sweet husband. Oh, please, 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 well, that was pretty embarrassing, and even though I don't like the Troy Hector scene, it's looking like a winner. Let's take a look at the fights, starting with small scale battle scenes. 2004 Troy does a great job creating exciting fights while limiting the use of Eastern combat moves. This is actually kind of rare in modern movies, and the fight between Achilles and Hector is extremely well executed and gripping to watch. In Troy to Odyssey, probably the best fight happened off screen as Odysseus attempted to steal some honey from an angry swarm of bees. But sadly, we didn't get to see that, so the best we're left with is this fight against Antonius. Which is also kind of confusing because there's a bunch of sword clanging going on in the background, which makes sense because Antonius had like 10 people with him in the beginning of the fight. And then you only get to see Odysseus fighting him and occasionally a shot of his son fighting a couple of guys. So did his son take out 10 people, and then at the end his son helps take out Antonius, so is his son the hero of the movie? Anyway, Troy 2004 gets this one. I would die for you. Sushi! Okay, but what about large-scale battle scenes? Well, that's not really a fair category, because Troy to Odyssey only had a cast of about 15 to 20 people. That doesn't make for the most epic battle of Troy. But, you know, there's budget to consider, and they probably didn't have that many friends to invite over. I mean, I'm sure Brad Pitt has a lot more friends than this guy. And, I, okay, so this category could be renamed, Who Has More Friends? And obviously it's Brad Pitt. So, Brad Pitt wins. Again, good good for you, Brad Pitt. If you know what's there, waiting, beyond that beach, immortality, take it, it's yours! Now let's take a listen to the music. The original Troy, the music is done by the renowned James Horner. And if it sounds familiar, well there's a freaking reason for it.
James Horner reused this piece of music in every goddamn movie he ever scored. There are many, many, many more examples, and you can check them out if you search James Horner Danger Theme Self Plagiarism, as a bunch of people have made compilations. It's considered a classic example of self plagiarism, which is a huge shame since it's just regular plagiarism. <laughs> James Horner is as hacky as hacks come, and no matter how crappy the music is in Troy to Odyssey, it doesn't matter because James Horner deserves nothing but ridicule. Can you see your doom approaching? Your doom is a fiction. I will see you in hell. This brings us to a count of 12 to 2. And it's not looking good for Troy the Odyssey, as it is probably inferior in terms of quality, but modern day critics aren't supposed to care about that. It's time to look at the most important of all categories, diversity. Diversity in cinema is all the rage now. It doesn't matter the context, you need non-white people in your movie. In 2004, people weren't quite evolved enough to understand this, so all the movies made about ancient Greece at the time were racist. Troy the Odyssey, on the other hand, balanced progressive ideas with realism by placing several Asian people in the background. There may be more, but I counted 10 definitive distinct Asians, including the spunky old lady, so a point for each. It's a tie score of 12 to 12, and we can't have that, so we need a bonus tie-breaking category. Let's go with best death scene. In Troy, Hector's death is expected but no less tragic because of it. After an epic battle, Achilles bests him and drags his body away tied to a chariot. The death of Achilles is also beautifully done where his final moments he no longer focuses on his own glory, but instead reflects on his love for Perseus. Now let's compare these two deaths to the death of the Minotaur in Troy the Odyssey. Well, it was a close race, but Troy the Odyssey comes out on top as a superior film. It comes highly recommended, as I've only given you a glimpse of its greatness. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. All the gods are to be feared and respected. What are you talking about? Maybe you fought with your heart. And your testicles. I thought you were a dumb brute. I could have forgiven a dumb brute.